Hello, it's Jimmy here at O'Reilly. So, just come to look at a Renault traffic here. So, it's a 1.6, and again, as usual, it's low on coolant. Almost everyone I ever come to is low on coolant. I don't know if there's some sort of fault with these vans, but it's got some intermittent issues that he was unable to get resolved. So, you probably noticed I'm back to being an actual mobile mechanic this time so I'm not just parked on the road with someone meeting me turns out this guy was having this problem with this Renault traffic and he was going to his usual mechanic who, who in the customer's words said that he's old school so he was unable to sort of help him out with this van uh, he said the REC look at it who have changed the battery and not much more than that basically but he said look the van keeps losing power getting random messages pop up here and there let's have a look at what we got on the dash anyway yeah the main point I wanted to say here was obviously when he was trying to search for you know how to sort out the problem with this Renault traffic he found me on YouTube he was watching some of the videos and he didn't realize I was less than a mile away from him so that's why I'm here okay so there isn't actually any faults on the dashboard I've just been flicking through here to make sure that the external temperature sensor is working which it is First thing I always do on these now, as long as you've not got any warning messages on there, you can go through this menu and see that. The little blue sign down there just means that the engine's cold. Got the Launch UK Eurotab 3 set up. Do scan. Okay, so we've got some faults. Let's have a look at these. Restraint system, oil level sensor, external temperature sensor. We can see that that is working, that's in the memory. Now, like I said, this has just had a battery. Oh, there you go, battery disconnection. It's had a battery, so all of these faults I'm going to ignore these ones. Uh, that one as well. Speed limiter is not working and cruise control not working preheating diagnostic fault so glow plugs are going to be very likely if I enter in here go to data stream I'm going to look for on these which is upstream pressure we'll take those and the engine speed graph them over here now you can use it as a graph like this or you can combine them so these two charts basically should rise and come down so the pressure of the exhaust and the engine speed should sort of match. And if we give it a rev up, you can see there that that doesn't happen. Blue chart comes down but this one takes a minute or so to actually come back down. So that means that the upstream pressure pipe is blocked. We're going to get that unblocked and change the glow plugs. So what I've done here is taken off the air inlet pipe just so we can access down to this upstream pressure hose here. So we're just going to concentrate this video basically on that. I'm not going to talk about doing the glow plugs. I've already got loads of videos on that. I've got loads of videos on this as well. But um, try and make it as detailed as I can on cleaning these and what I do to do it. So this particular one is going to need a 8mm to open this. I've got the 7mm on there because I was opening the um, Jubilee clips from there. So now we'll get the 8mm on, put the 7mm back in there. Get this opened up. Just use a little pick to stick in between there and it'll easily release these. Now on this particular model we are going to have to bend this bracket slightly but it will come back to place. Now just using a little pliers here to grab hold of this little clip just like that and pull that out. Put that over there again. Now we just separate the sensor from the bracket there. And now the bracket is part of the metal tube down there, so there's no way to 
take it off without removing the whole metal pipe that runs back down to the manifold. Um, so you can, it is soft metal, so you can just flex it back a little bit like that. And then we, we've got access to this tube here. We're going to remove this. We've got these on, uh, whatever you call them, uh, ju Jubilee clips that cannot be reused. So we need to break these off as well. So I just used these to do that. We just grab the um, clamp, twist it, and then we can just pull that off. Now I've showed this many times before. We're going to use it again. Get it down here over the tube and just wedge it against something. You can pop it off without damaging the rubber hose here. Now you do need to inspect these. I did mention in some videos before. Let me just uh, put this tool down. So yeah, we do need to inspect these just by stretching them out a little bit, seeing if there's any hairline cracks in them. Because if there is. Once you unblock this pipe, it will disintegrate. It will blow out. 3,000 millibars roughly come through this pipe. At the moment, there isn't a lot coming through it because it's blocked. But once you clear that blockage, you're then gonna have around 3,000 millibars coming up through this. Probably more when it's under, under load, to be honest. But if you're sitting stationary and you accelerate the van up fully, it will raise to about 3,000 millibars. So it could even be more than that if you're driving uphill and you've got the turbo working so now if I connect this little tube up here go through a midi vac so and we give that a squeeze you can see how much pressure that is actually holding there goes all the way up to max you can see how slowly that air is releasing We pull it off, drop it back down. Okay, so now I've got this mini vac. It's a broken one, so the gauge is missing, but I've just glued over that. But the difference with this one is it can put pressure as well as vacuum. So I've got that same hose connected down here, and I've got some of this fluid inside the spray bottle, so Launch UK DPF cleaning fluid. What I'm going to do is just fill this tube up. And you'll see it coming up the tube here as we fill it. And we'll give that a couple of minutes to try and soak its way into the uh, carbon down there just to try and soften it up. It's going to make it a little bit easier for us to clean that pipe out if we can soften the fluid first. Now what I'm going to do is just put a bit of pressure on it so the fluid is trying to push its way in. If I put too much pressure on, the pipe will blow off. This will go up to around about 40 psi of pressure. So I want to put like 10 or 20 psi of pressure on it, just so the fluid's trying to push its way down. So I've got a roller wrist from Amazon. It's guitar G-string. And we attach it to a drill like this. So I've got it folded over, so it's doubled. This is some of the stuff that we're getting out. We've got it down that tube. So we're just drilling, drilling it down the tube. You've got to take your time with this because you can't push it in too hard. You're going to bend up the cable, so you just got to be gentle, ease it in. Now this can take five minutes or it can take up to two hours. It depends on how bad the pipe is. So far, I've been on this about 20 minutes now. Okay, so we finally got through that into the last section. And you can see there, that's the sort of stuff that comes off it. I will measure this piece of uh, cable up because a lot of people ask, how long is the cable that you're using to put down? So you can see, we came to about here, so that was that was the end, end of the pipe. So the pipe is about that long. I'll get a tape out and measure that. So that is about nine inches there, but we've got a little bit over around about 10 inches of cable there now what i'm going to do is put some more fluid down here and we'll see this time it's not going to hold so it should just flow down and there it goes 
this little guy just came running out of my van and that reminds me of a story that uh, once I left a customer's address and uh, when I got home I thought okay I'm gonna tidy up my tools in the van open the side door and out jumps somebody's cat who then decided to run off up the street uh, that was a bit of an awkward situation for me once so now if we've got this connected back up the midi back again we squeeze the trigger this time and we don't have any movement on the gauge so we have now freed that out so that is the tool there I'm using, a little drill I had a lot of people in the comments before saying that I should give this tool a name and what should we call it, I don't know I'll leave it down to the maybe the subscribers but I was thinking obviously it's a G-string on a drill I was thinking about calling it Nasty Nate Nasty Nate does love drilling tight holes now to get this pipe refitted you're going to need a couple of spare 10 mil Jubilee clips so now we've got that clip back on there this metal pipe like I said you just now just bend that back over the shape there and we can get this push back in into place it might be difficult doing it single handedly but you know what I'm doing just twist that so it sits back level there and we can get that bolted back in Right, so I was getting a little bit carried away there with my chatting and what I forgot to do is the final step which is get the fluid down in the compressor at 130 psi we've got the same fluid again in the gun here we've got that attached just squeeze the trigger and get a litre of this fluid in with the engine on if you do it with the engine off you can risk getting it into the into the cylinders so it's best to do this with the engine on we'll hold the hold the trigger here on this until all the fluid's gone this is going to clean out the pipe a little bit better make sure it doesn't block back up quickly and it's also going to clean out the dpf come inside hold the revs at around about 3000 rpm we can see here the grams of soot will start to come down So we'll hold the revs there until that comes under 6 grams of soot. Now we can see that this graph will sort of come up and down at the same sort of rate. See there. And that's those two items there, engine speed and upstream of the turbine. Now that that's working fine. See they both look very similar. Now at the idle there we have differential pressure of 5 millibars which is perfect. Now we can just clear all of these fault codes that we have here. And we're also clearing the battery related faults here. Once you've cleared the faults for the uh, upstream pressure sensor, your cruise control buttons will start working again, normally. Okay, so now that's all done, we'll continue with the rest of the repair with the glow plugs and see you on the next video.